Uganda is among the least developed countries. North and northeast of the country are underdeveloped. Why? The over 20-year political strife in the north and northeastern Uganda left families poor and food insecure. The over 40 years of systematic cattle rustling from the Karimojong prolonged drought and torrential flooding which left many in need of food and livelihood, especially in Teso sub-region. Structural breakdown of most infrastructure, retarded development, communities relied on humanitarian support for survival. Government and non-state actors were up to rescue the sick and hungry. Today, with relative peace in these regions, much effort is put on sustainable livelihood activities. There are mechanisms by the population to return to sustainable agricultural production. Food insecurity and poor incomes affect development in these regions. Government and non-state actors were up to rescue the sick and hungry. We were given the knowledge on convene and convincing and they helped us with the, the tools to be used. We were sent to the villages in the community where we work. Our entry point to these communities is that we go to them, we mobilize them, we train them, uh, we bring them together to, to discuss, dialogue on the challenges that they are facing on issues of land and access to quality seeds. These non-government organizations operate under a regulated environment by government, but with the guidance of the National Umbrella Body, Uganda National NGO Forum. Our participation was to look at how do we ensure that the civil society organizations in these three districts are able to understand the laws that govern them, but also the other stakeholders in government who work with them to enforce these laws are able to appreciate how to work with civil society. In the regions of Teso, Karamoja and Lango, there are humanitarian agencies who have been helping communities in need of relief. Today, many of these civil society organizations have shifted to sustainable livelihood and development activities. Food security and household incomes are a major focus to vulnerable persons in society, women, youth and persons living with a disability. They want a holistic and sustainable food security to improve household incomes through agricultural value chains. We really uh, look forward to see the district establishing agro-input shops that can help farmers access these inputs at a very smaller distance. And so uh, some of those has cost us... Uh, Cost farmers a challenge to with a time framework 2016 to 2020, the Interchurch Organizations for Development Cooperation, a Netherlands-based NGO, is supporting selected civil society organizations to promote advocacy for social change and inclusion of communities in improved agricultural productivity, proper education, <laughs> nutrition, and marketing for better livelihoods. They focus on land acquisition for production availability of quality planting materials, post-harvest and market access, especially for women, youth and persons living with a disability in the region. In Teso sub-region, the Civil Engagement Alliance is working with the Church of Uganda Teso Diocese Planning and Development Office and the Pentecostal Assemblies of God. We want to see communities that are empowered and are able to challenge the status quo in terms of accessing land, but also in terms of uh, accessing quality inputs. But the first priority is uh, food security at household. And this when the uh, excess, that's when you can be able to send to the market. So that knowledge needed to be stirred up with the farmer. Ogirak Farmers Association is in Atate village, Bugondo sub-county in Kasilo County in Serede district. Farmers have trained on techniques on food security. They market produce through Ogirak Farmers Association and own a grain store constructed with support from Bag Soroti. 
Apotapo pedo si emurki kini kuape tunga lotela bugondo emurki kini pepa hani nubi pedo sa duku nu e guru pulo tunga lerai la korioko. We we united as the people of Bugondo Parish, the farmers basically, and we sought ways on how we're going to to help ourselves get liberated from poverty. And one of the things that was remaining for us was to utilize our land to produce crops that we could bulk and sell to make money. So in that training, they also got a chance to receive the store for bulking from PAG. In Kateta sub-county in Serere district is Kanyangan Agricultural Food Security Cooperative Society with over 60 households. The group collects maize, cassava and millet. They are targeting a food secure community. Now, I will go to I told you that you are so eating a certain way. One of the problems they identified as small scale farmers at that time when the training was going on was the hunger that was affecting everybody and affected production. Then the ranking and the voting they carried out, hunger at that time got 70, 90, and then poverty 50 votes. And then the alcohol on the HI draw season. Climate change remains a problem to farmers as many have not adapted to climate smart agriculture. These farmers in Ngora district suffered armyworm infestation and lost all the maize. They are now adapting to kitchen vegetable gardens for nutrition. There are our small gardens around the, uh, around the home compound. A kitchen garden. So this one is called the kitchen garden. Members have been trained on sustainable vegetable growing. <laughs> so out of the, the knowledge he learned from the group uh, as a learning center, that knowledge he took it home to practice home. So there was a land that the father had given him. So he went, took that knowledge and he practiced uh, uh, growing vegetables, uh, tomatoes, onions, cabbage, uh, eggplant and sukuma. With the support from Church of Uganda, Teddo Saroti, the group has constructed a shallow well which they use to irrigate their gardens. So now this it has become so easy, even if they go to the garden, they, 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 uh, they don't again have that worry that after the garden, you're really very tired, then you're supposed again to go for water. This project also empowers women on self-sustenance, starting from the kitchen. They have been trained on making energy-saving cooking stoves for them to conserve the environment. You can also sit there because it's not hot because the insulators are inbuilt there which keeps the heat inside. Even he puts her things for frying her food there but you can see when the fire cannot catch. In Abim district, smallholder farmers have been trained on seed quality, agricultural technologies and post-harvest handling. In Morlem sub-county, Adair cassava farmers have over 40 acres of cassava. The Arid Land Development Program, ADP, and Share an Opportunity Uganda, South Uganda, have trained and linked farmers to new markets. Right now he says uh, for him he has been, uh, the matter of drying has not been a problem. They get, they peel it and then they spread it on, on carpets, tarplings, and then later on the dried ones, uh, they, they are able to store. But this cannot be done during a rainy season. Uh, through constant uh, dialogue with the different, uh, different deal, cassava, producers and buyers they have been able to come into an agreement and uh, the dealers were giving them at a rate of 1300 but they agreed they are now going to be buying at 1200 the civil engagement alliance communities in abim district advocate for quality seed increased land for production and access to markets what adp can do is to link you the farmers to the input dealers the input dealers who have reputable record or history of producing quality seeds. In Abim district, land acquisition for agriculture for vulnerable groups 
the youth, women and persons with disability remains a question. The political aspect is not sorted out yet. The wrangles and boundaries between NAPAC, Amuria and ABIM affects development programs. NGOs need to work smoothly. Because people from here are not in good terms with it. the other people from Murlem, and Murlem is not in good terms with the people here. At times when he, me as an individual, when he um, mobilize people from here, when a meeting is supposed to take place in Adaya, people here from here will never go there. It's been trying her best to see it that such disputes will be put to an end, whereby they could come and organize meetings here and pick some people also to go and join their brothers whom they, are, whom they have a dispute with. But however, as the organization, we are not just keeping quiet. We have to collide with the councillors and uh, other stakeholders from here to see that at the end of it all, we want people to live in harmony with each other. Nevertheless, communities in other areas of Karamoja are settled on the land, producing and selling food. They are sensitized and they are aware of these three value chains that will be linked to the market. We have worked in partnership with the district uh, production office, the district agriculture officer, the district commercial officer. The, since the, the NGOs came here on the sub-county, they start going with the house on parishes, on villages, sensitizing people concerning uh, this selling, badly selling of food. And they tell us that they are now looking for the market, good market. In Lango sub-region, Lida district, the Civil Engagement Alliance Consortium is supporting facilitation for peace and development, FAPAD, an NGO based in Lira district. In Anyaku village, Agadi Sabu County, is Grace Akelo, a widow, whose land has been taken away by her late husband relatives. A member of the Agali Mixed Farmers Association, Akelo is now building a permanent housing structure from the cassava and maize she harvested from the farm. She, she got the idea because uh, she has been living in these great such houses. But uh, it has become very expensive for her, very expensive for her to maintain the grass, the grass such houses. So she decided just to put this one so that it is permanent. FAPAD is also addressing seed quality, increased food production and nutrition. During community platforms, the leaders are tasked to address community challenges. That they are trying also as farmers forum to engage sub-county leadership. Um, to further continue, you know, like having constant conversations or engagement with members of the coordinators of Operation Wealth Creation because um, the quality of inputs they deliver and then also the timing is not really so appropriate. Local leaders and elders have formulated ordinances to address food security problems. As, as regards to fake seeds, and once you, you're caught, you, you, you penalize. Uh, we also have, we are in the process of ensuring also our farmers are also safeguarded in regards to produce. We are soon, it is in the process now in the Attorney General's office to have that audience also pass as regards with produce. What we are, we are, what we are trying to advise the farmers, buy the seed from the agents, especially this, the agents that are based in some places, in shops. Because now when you buy from the market, anybody can brand. On the overall, it will require the stakeholders to engage policymakers to integrate the whole development agenda for all the people of Uganda. Because you know when you go to a clinic, it is when you are sick and they treat you. So what we are trying to achieve in the compliance clinics is we shall just take like a sample of organizations in Lira and we do a uh, compliance audit in the organization to just understand how have, my, have you complied with the law, uh, have you tax returns, are they on track? So many people now say, okay, you are talking about access to land. Supposing we access land, we get the seed, are you able to give us water 
so that we, we produce sustainably for, for, for food security. Because uh, the region is now affected by climate change. With and uh, we want to, to really think that this year the success stories will be more. Kaija, 